Yo, what it do, man? Welcome to our first episode of Grind Face and the Therapist, man. We're going to go raw dog with this one. We don't know much about podcasting, but we're just going to jump in on the deep end. And today's topic, we're going to talk about dealing with success, man. Um, introducing me, I'm Demetrius and my wife. Samia. And we've been together for 20 plus years, marriage for 20 plus years. Um, so we're just going to leave our opinion on our, our life struggles and life lessons and we're going to get started on success. So what you you got going on? So you want to give them back story or what? I mean, we could, we could talk about the back stories. How we used to, um, was teenage parents, um, catching the bus with the groceries and the kid, um, the struggles we have, you know what I'm saying? I mean, give them a little bit of the struggles, walking, catching the bus. I remember one story. That really impacted me struggling. And this is because uh, I'm normally never asked for help. I'm not the type of one to ask for help. But this time I needed I needed a co-signer. And basically, my mom or my sister didn't want to co-sign me for a vehicle. Saying I wasn't responsible enough, whatever. Who knows what reason why they didn't want to co-sign. But that really, like, stuck with me. Like, damn, ain't nobody going to help me when I'm down. And I know I never asked for anything. And so when that happened, I just got on my grind harder and made things happen. And then at one point in life, I owned five, five vehicles. And man, you know what I'm saying? Just how things change and just you just move on. You know what I'm saying? It's funny because I remember that story. And um, even while we were married, and before we were married, when I would want to ask my parents and different people for help, I remember you getting mad. Like, even if it was just for a ride, you're like, no, we'll walk. And I used to get so frustrated with you, but it taught me so much not depend on anybody outside of our four walls. And so I think even in that was a lesson for me because I did have a support system. But I remember when I would ask you, would be like, don't ask them, we'll do it, even if we have to walk. We have to catch the bus. And so I think even in that, from a young age, because I think we were only like, what, 18, 19 then? Yeah, we was young. You already had a, the mindset of like, I'm going to go get it myself. I'm not going to ask anyone for anything. And that's the sad part as today's time in this generation is like they don't attempt to try nothing. They just want to hand out. Um, saying if you do need a ride or something, what's wrong with the bus? I guess they got Uber now. Yeah, it's, but, it's Uber but now. But Uber is so, so much expensive. Like, say you want to go somewhere, that's like $20. I mean, the bus is right there. It could take you all the way across town for like $2. It's just a part of the effort that this generation is not trying to put in into the hard work, I feel like. Right, right. I mean, we had, we definitely have a story. You know, met when I was 13, eighth grade. You were 13, freshman in high school. Um and it just went on from there. You know, success, I remember when I got pregnant, we were both 15. Oh, don't be like them. That's what, <laughs> that was the story. P people were saying, don't be like us. But yet now they, they wish they was to, like us. Which is so funny <laughs> how tables turn. But I remember being 15 pregnant. And, you know, you know that would be another podcast show, you know, how we were before. But anyways, I, I looked into the community, you know, and different people that I, I saw, and I was like, I don't want to be that. And so, which made me change my life around. You know, I didn't hang out anymore. I kind of became an introvert because I pretty much wanted to be the best mother that I could be. And so I think that was the driving force for me as an individual to say, hey, you know, I want better. And I think that's – I always say that – um motherhood is either going to make you or break you You're either going to show up or step away it's really going to show the true person of who you are and how determined you are and I think getting pregnant even though I don't you know promote teenage pregnancy that that was my driving force because then it was no longer about me yeah you you totally switched the game up on me because um <laughs> I was attracted to the other person so when you got pregnant you switched up on uh, me that was a whole different obstacle I got to um deal with and go through which but, 
you know, say you you changed and I didn't change. So it's Which that's a different story. Introduced a lot of problems into our relationship and then in our marriage years to come that we got over, thank God. But that's a whole other podcast story. But yeah, I, I felt like I had to grow up. And looking back, I think because I didn't want to be what I saw, I think I was too extreme and overkill. But let's talk about even you dropping out of high school. Ain't you drop out? Yeah, I am. <laughs> She's a dropout. And it just, just to bring that up, because people want to use that as an excuse. Oh, I didn't finish school. Oh, this and that. Um, it's, it's never too late to make a change in your life. Right. I did drop you know? out of high school, but... Having my baby determined me like I was on go mode. I dropped out. I wasn't. I didn't drop out. Let's 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 make it clear because I was always in honor classes, always smart, never a dummy. Ever. It was difficult. Um, the support system and different things that I was dealing with during that time, being homeless, you know, a lot of stuff. I had my first place at sixteen, and so school wasn't the priority once I had a baby. Because there was a lot of moving parts with households, family members, parents that I wasn't really allowed to focus on school because I was actually in survival mode. So I didn't just say, hey, I'm going to stop school. I had a baby to think about and I had, you know, I was in, you know, survival mode. So when, when, at what age did you feel like you got get out that survival mode? Like everything got a little bit more comfortable. Mm, I think when we actually moved in together. Because it was easier for me because then I had a teammate. True, true. You've always been. That's one thing I will always give you credit for is I've never had to work. If I wanted to work is because I wanted to. You know, a lot of times people say men are the ho- men are the head of the household, but they don't step into that role. And I could say even from when we were teenagers, you always provided financially to where I could be at home with the kid or the kids, you know. And so that was huge for me, just having that support. And that's how we became one another support. You know, that goes back to don't ask anybody, but in these four walls, we got each other. But then I want to, you know, venture off to success because that's really what we wanted to talk about in this podcast. Well, we was just bringing the the struggle up. I mean, we we wasn't born with a silver (laughs) spoon in our hands. That's the point we were trying to point out right there is like we really – came from the mud and got it out the mud into where we at now. Okay. So, so let's talk about business. Well, well let's go back to what made you want to get your master's degree and go, go to school. Whew. So I've always was a dreamer, you know, that used to get on your nerves and now you can see why. Yeah. That used to, yeah, <laughs> she, she was dream. I was like, nah, this is reality. We got to do this right now. Like this got to be paid. I've always seen the bigger picture. I've always been um, had faith, and I've always been willing to take risks where Mr. Mayo has always been safe. Um, and so I've always seen the bigger picture. I've always seen myself doing greater things, even at a young age, even when people can understand the things that I was saying and comprehending, which is funny now because they always tell me now, you always said this stuff, but he didn't understand it because he was more of, probably dealing with the stress of the bills and see, I don't have to deal with that. Um, I've never like stressed over a bill not being paid, but I remember watching you and like, what's the matter? You would never say, Oh, I'm stressed about the bills or anything, but just your energy. Let me know something was wrong with something you had to take care of, but you always kept that away from me, which I appreciate because you never allowed me to have to take on that stress of, basically figuring out ways to provide for the family. True, true. And that that that's what even stress because since 16 I had a job and that's kind of my success story also because I was afraid to leave a um a 9 that? to 5. A 9 to 5 cuz I I'm used to put in the work, you got a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? If I did the work, I got paid, you know what I'm saying? Um and bills don't stop coming. So when I was at this point at this one job that my side hustle was making way more money than my nine to five. You still didn't want to quit. I still didn't want to quit my job because it was embedded in me that you need to keep a job. And then just one year, man, I just jumped out on faith and just. You jumped out after I showed you it could be done I after mean, I jumped out. <laughs> true. I mean, but at the same, it was, it was time. And, you know, and once I made that transition, it was just more blessings. You know what I'm saying? So, but but anyways, you didn't get to the point of 
you your process of going to school and get your master's. You're like you was a stay at home mom. What I was made a stay at home go? mom. So I was a stay at home mom, which is boring for a creative. Um, I do. You know what? I even though it was boring, I will say this in terms of I feel like I didn't have a social life, but in, I will. I won't take that back because the time that I was able to spend with my kids, volunteering in their classrooms, you know, doing things like that hands on that I didn't get to do with our youngest daughter that I I would have liked. But at that point, I was like in school and doing things like that. But even though I was a stay at home mom. I've always had vision, you know, but when I was younger, even though I was creative, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. You know, I just had the title of mom and the title of wife, and sometimes women can get lost in those titles and forget that they were a person before they became these things. And for me, because I was a mother at such an early age, it was almost like my identity. Um, and once I saw and start, you know, tapping into my creative mood, I would write at home, I would write poems, I've always wrote films, you know, like scripts. And so I remember just thinking, like, I want to, you know, I want to be a lawyer, and so I went back to school. That's when I got. Yeah, she's very good at investigating shit. <laughs> in debating. But I'd be right a lot of times. However, so I remember going back. Well, I got my GED when I was like, what, 18? So, but then I went back to school to get my associates when I was like 23. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be a lawyer. Then I was like, I want to be work with at-risk youth, you know, to instill in kids what I wish I would have gotten when I was their age. And so then I was like, okay, I want to be a probation officer. Then I interned and I'm like, I'm not a paper, I'm not a paper pusher. You know, I wanted to impact, not just monitor. And you didn't have, the caseloads were so big that you wouldn't even see all your probationers on a continuous basis or a regular basis. So for me, it was just like, ah, oh, this is not for me. But then I got my bachelor's. But by by the time I was pursuing my bachelor's, I had already knew and I had prayed about it because I that's a story within itself, you know, was seeking purpose, crying out to God. Like I have, you know, I know I have talents, but what did you create me to do? You know, my thing now in life is I'm very intentional with everything. And every day I get up, I get up with the purpose. And so I remember seeking, you know, God for purpose. I was like in my mid 20s back then. And I was just crying out, asking him, what is my purpose? Like, what did you create me to do? And I remember enrolling in school. And then the next day we were in our leadership class before a church. And they were talking about purpose. And I remember crying out to God during praise and worship and asking, you know, did I go to school without consulting you? And I will never forget Minister Lynn, this lady that used to attend my church. She came back to me and she woke, she Walked to me in the, oh my goodness, I'm tongue tied. She, I went to the bathroom at the praise and worship. She came into the bathroom. She followed me into the bathroom. Follow? Follow. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that way. Anyways, she came into the bathroom and she started talking to me and telling me that I was crying out to God about my purpose. And my purpose was to not just go to school to get my bachelor's and my master's and all this other stuff. And I was supposed to be in counseling. And the funny thing is like two days before that I had enrolled in my bachelor's program with the anticipation of becoming a therapist. And so I was always the go-to person always since I was a kid, always a leader. People always came to me for advice, but I never knew I could make money off of being a therapist. I just I told don't. her, stop <laughs> letting them call you with their problems and charge their asses. Oh, he would be so mad. He would be so mad at me. They would call me all times a night, you know, just different people asking me about their marital issues. I would, you know, I was counseling before yeah, I was even was, a therapist. She was putting women up on game. My homies did not want their girls to come talk to her. Like, don't let your wife talk to my girl. Like, she's going to enlighten them. <laughs> Only broken men and weak men don't want an empowered woman because then they know once they know their worth, they may have to level up. But anyways, yeah, that was a huge issue. But, um, you know, that was said and done. Then all of that came to fruition, and then I pursued, you know, my master. So I was always in my talent, in my gift, operating in my gift, writing books, writing books. I was doing it all before I even, you know, really tapped into it. And so that's what made me be like, okay, 
because I just, I think what made me pursue more was just sitting at home, cooking, cleaning, taking care of the kids, after school activities. And then one day at 25, I woke up and was like, hey, where's Sunia? I'm more than just a mom and a wife. Yeah, she tried to switch it up again. See, you guys? Like, she switched it up when she was pregnant, and she tried to switch it up again at 25. They used to be mad at me because I ain't switched up. I was the still same old dude. <laughs> yeah, I wanted him to grow up. And, and, you know, that was, that was, so I was really religious. Now I'm spiritual, and I have a relationship with God. But before, it was more religious. It was routine. It was what I thought a Christian should be. You know, what was, you know, what I saw. And so because I saw that I kind of pushed those values on him. And I think that was our biggest conflict because I'm like, look, like we're out of that life. And even though you've never been the type of guy to hang out, you were always at home. I never had those issues where you were just out just a little when infidelity came in. But besides that, you were typically always at home or always at home. Um, but, yeah, I think a lot of our conflict came in because, you know, when you're with somebody since you're 13, like, you evolve, and you're not that same person. And I became, I felt like I was growing up a little bit more faster than he was. I was getting frustrated with him, and he was getting frustrated with me. Yeah, she was running to old age. I was just walking. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that I was running into old age. I just felt like you know, being a responsible adult came with a mature min mindset and mentality. Uh, I think I was overboard, though, because at 25, I probably was acting like I was 45 instead of 25. And I think the church played a big part of that, in my opinion. Well, it okay, so it did, because I was religious. Again, I wasn't spiritual, and I was going based on what was told to me versus seeking God myself. And I was trying to be perfect instead of better. And so I'm bi I'm still like this. I believe in walking it how I talk it. Like, even as a therapist, I'm not going to get in. Some people, you know, they they say stuff that, you know, are try to tell people things that they're not actually living. And I never wanted to be that person. So when I got, you know, I was a Muslim growing up. My mom was a Muslim, and then my dad got saved and became a Christian. And then I had to choose between the two. And I did that on my own by, you know, researching Islam, Islamic views and Christianity views. And then I decided for myself, where was I going with this? I don't know, but they probably think what's this got to do with success? Well, this is the <laughs> point of success is basically our relationship is success. No, I was going to say know what something. I was going we came to from that. toxic, broken people, and now we be better in a place. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to cut you off because I don't know what I was saying. So basically what I was saying was I was religious in the sense of, I thought like, oh, you know, this is a cr good Christian. That's a good Christian. And I just really don't believe in being a hypocrite in anything I do. If I am preaching something, I want to live that. So I never want to be like that hypocrite, like teaching values and purpose, especially with my kids. I don't believe in kids do what you say. I believe they do what they do. So it's, I have two daughters. So for me, those principles are big in showing them what a woman is with integrity and self-respect. And so I didn't want to be a hypocrite. And so because he wasn't living in the same, according to the same standards I was living, it became an issue. But I even feel like tying it into success, I believe because we were toxic back then, I would say we were both broken, trying to find ourselves. We were kids. Um, and we didn't know what success looked like. You know, we didn't have a successful blueprint of what, a healthy marriage look like, a healthy family look like. But you did have key factors, like I was saying, of being a man, you know, taking care of the household. But I feel like success came in when we learned, when we went through everything we went through, We I began to look at success from a different perspective. Like, we didn't have to be perfect. We just needed to be better. And what, 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 and what works for us? might not work for you right you know everybody's success is different on every topic so you know what I'm saying works what works for you and then another thing I will say like because he was working and you were in like doing graphics and a well, lot actually, of different yeah, things actually I went to school too I got my AA in graphic design I got my BA in communic um, 
Graphic com- community, communication. Um, <laughs> visual communications. My bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, the thing is, when I used to hang out, I also was the one that I'm about to go to school before I hang out. So I was enrolled at the local community college, getting classes. Then I came back and hung out. And then that just motivated the people that on the block. They also joined school. You so keep I was saying hung out like you were out. You hung out I in front of the house. In front of the house. <laughs> it's the same. It was a block. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It was in the middle of a block in the neighborhood, so blah, you know what I'm saying. But I inspired. I'm always was the one that inspired others to do because I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do me. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna follow nobody. I'm gonna do me. So before hanging out all day doing nothing, I went to school, and all these credits added up to get me de- getting my degree, which helped me start my own side hustle with graphic designs and all that, and later on starting more different businesses. So um. Let's get to you've got your therapy, you know, your therapist now, and then let's talk about how you process transition into only your company, starting your own company and now having employees and now being considered a boss. Hmm. So the thing about me is, you know, I say employees and employers, they're both good because you need them both. But even when I started working for someone, so I got bored, went to school, started working Um, I always knew the nine to five was did not fit my personality. Even when I was in school, before I started working, I always knew that I didn't want to be a therapist Monday through Friday for, okay. You know, the funny thing, not to cut you (laughs) off, it didn't fit my character either, but I just had to do what I had to do. I had that mindset of, I didn't want to do this, but I have to. But I did you know what, what I had to do. But I didn't have to do. No, I was but I'm like just saying I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't have. I wasn't with the nine to five mindset. But it was at the same time. I have to do this because this is all I. I got. But I think you know I had saying? a little wiggle room. Remember we used to joke about um, everybody hates Chris. I was like the mom. And be oh, like, my, my man got, got two jobs. jobs. Yeah. <laughs> and that was my mindset. So I knew I really didn't have to work if I didn't want to work. But. Um, as a team player, when I would see, you know, when he got stressed, I'm like, okay, let me level up and let me go to school because I want to take some off his plate. And then my kids were, the older two were actually, they were like, what, middle school at that point? Um, I don't, yeah, the dates, I don't know. Um, so they were older. Our youngest was like still like in preschool and different things like that. But the other two were older. And so I'm like, okay, let me help take some things out off his plate. But while I was working, um, I'm like, yeah, this just this 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 ain't me. And so I've always been the type to uh, what what job was that? Just you was working, this wasn't you. The county of San Bernardino. Okay. The school district. The school district I had to get my hours, my three thousand hours. So to become a licensed therapist in the state of California, it's like a, a residency. So you have to have hours before you can, you know, take your state test before you even get licensed. Um, So those are things I had to do, but I necessarily, I mean, I enjoyed it because I love therapy. I do therapy with my eyes closed. It's not work for me, but I knew to be on somebody else's time because time is huge to me. I didn't want to do that. And I feel like working for my, people don't understand though, working for yourself, you, you actually spend more time than until you're able to get the engine running without you, you know, where you don't have to put so much work in. You actually put more time in your business than you do in because the nine to five you clock out, but in your business, you know, it's yeah, I'm you working put, right now. You put more time into, but the reward is much bigger. The reward you is much the, bigger. The, 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 well, the profit well, is way bigger because I used to be work well, for a temp service and basically save the job pain. I get paid twelve dollars an hour. I know that temp service is getting at least double that twenty four dollars an hour. So it's it's a bigger piece of the fruit when you own no. the business okay because okay because i always want to look at it from an employee's perspective too and everybody doesn't have the mindset of being an employer or want to be an employer and i just think you have to do what's best for you you know what works for you it does you know clocking in a nine to five doesn't work for me but that doesn't mean it because success is going back to success is viewed differently. And I think success is basically based on your individual blueprint of success. Like I feel like now we have a successful marriage. I feel like right now I have successful a business. I feel like right now, you know, I've been a successful parent, a successful wife, but it depends on 
the person. I think many times people look at other people's situation and they feel less successful, but what is the definition of success? And I believe that's based on your own measuring stick. True. I, I totally agree with that because you'd be on the win- you be outside looking through a window and you have no idea what's going on in there. And you thinking they successful in, in area in different areas in their life, which is is crazy. Because I think people see money as success, but money to me is not a does not define success though. Because if if we had a lot of money, but we didn't get along, that's not successful to me. You know, if we had money, I feel happiness is success. If a person just could completely wake up in the morning and just be happy, I think you, you hit success. You know what I'm saying? Because if you think about it, being happy is fucking hard to, to get. You think so? Hell yeah. No. You know what I'm saying? If I you, don't if, think you, so. if, you, if, if you ain't got a job that's stressing you out and you're not happy, if, if your spouse out there cheating, you're not happy, everything revolves back to happy. But those are you decisions, know what I'm though. Yeah, but it's still, you don't have effect, to wait. It's still everything it still affects your happiness. So if you get your happiness to 100%, I think that's successful. But I think happiness is a choice, right? I think it's based on, because let's say your mate is out there cheating. It's a decision that you don't have to be in that situation, though. You know, like, you don't like your job. That's a situation you can change. And so I feel like happiness comes from within. I'm optimistic. You know me. I always see the glass halfway full. And I feel like just like my slogan with my business, life is simple. We just make it complicated. I really feel like, you know, you can have a down moment. And my dad gave me this, and I believe this. But that doesn't mean your day has to be down. You know, it's a moment. It's a situation. But I I try to see the positive in everything because happiness is a mindset. You know, it's not circumstantial. You got people in the hood and in, in, in poverty that's happy every day. Well, they're by saying if you uh, accomplish or conquer that happiness and you can walk through all these areas in your life and still be happy, that's true success. No, I definitely you think it's true saying? success, but I don't think it's hard to acquire happiness. I think ha- happiness is a mindset. True. But you got to have that mindset to walk through the darkness. That's what I'm just saying. If, if you could walk through darkness and be happy, Fucking you successful, man, at the end of the day. Because people want to say money, but money, I've seen people kill themselves, and they have a, a fat-ass bank account. So it's yeah. like that goes so back money, to happiness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Money you have has, a big-ass house, and, and there's chaos in it. Go back to happiness. I true. feel like everything goes back to happiness. And if you right. can walk through the dark and still be happy, I feel like you're successful in life. And, and that's a golden key right there. Are I, you I, happy? I, I would drop the dime right there. Like, woo. Wait, are you a, happy yeah i'm happy and at peace oh let's not forget the peace and peace that's two different things you got to find that peace i mean some days i have my days but some i get out of my my slump you know what i'm saying but at the, at the end of the day i'm cool in life i'm in a cool ass spot i was being funny when i asked you were you happy because you know i always do my check-ins and i think it's important as a you know a mate to always check in with your spouse to see, you know, gauge where they're at. Because I'm always like, you good? We good? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> people lie, though. But so, like, we was just sitting here talking about now. Everything hold on, we hold just on, said. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You slip. Sometimes people lie, though. Yeah, you know, people, when you ask them, are you good? And people just be like, yeah, I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? I was why I heard a video. Um, no, you got to clarify that a video because you, when somebody no. asks a man, is he, is he, um, is he cool? And he say, I'm all right. That means he ain't cool. Something's wrong with him. But you, but the way you slid that in there, like it was a subliminal, like you were saying, I do that. So you need to clarify that. I'm cool. I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? But look, (laughs) let's get back to the, um, basically, no, we we were just discussing. No, we, we stand right here because people cannot see your face expression and you laughing and you're joking. That's the power of the podcast. No, and people think you serious. That's the power of the podcast. I'll take it how y'all want to. But um, we were 20 plus years in the game. So um, so we, we were just describing years of the grind that we've been on. Just, I mean, from the mud, getting where we at. But we were going to bring up to the topic of everybody feel like they have the right to spend our money when they at home doing shit. How you feel about that? Like, you know what I'm saying? People hitting you up. Um, they even don't need hit you up to say how you doing, how you been. I'm just checking in, but they want to call you. I need help. I need this. I need that. You know what I'm saying? Because they feel like we're successful, but yet 
they they ain't doing nothing to change their situation in life. They just want to ride ride the um, wave. How you feel on on that kind of topic? You know, it's frustrating because you know we're the type of people that want to help mm-hmm. uh, and be helpers. Don't ask me a question and then keep cutting. Oh, you've been cutting me <laughs> off all day because you won't let me talk. So I think it's frustrating because. You know, we're the type, like, when we go out, we will foot the bill for the whole table. Um, and I I think, you know. Oh, man. We used to, <laughs> man, when I was up, I was I was doing that, just doing, flipping the bill. I'm talking about $1,000 bill. And then I hit rock bottom. The same people I've been spending them bills with, man, was not helping. But go back. I forgot what I was saying because you keep cutting me How off. How we helpers and like to see people win. Yeah, so if we rock with you, we really rock with you. You know what I mean? And that's just how we are. But to me, it's okay. So I was raised where you don't call and ask somebody for something unless you, you know, you got a relationship with them <clears throat> or you at least call and check on them. And so that going back to the lesson, even with my support system, when you wouldn't, You'll be like, don't call it and we could do it ourselves. And so even though I know sometimes people need help, I also want people to understand like we're people. You know, it's hurtful when people don't even call you to say, hey, how you doing? But if you need a loan or you need money, you know our number. And don't even invite you there to their events. But that's a different topic. Well, I don't care because I probably don't want to be there anyways. But the point is, is that you have to see people as humans, you know, and just because you think think they're successful or you think they're at a certain level or not you know i don't just think you should just hit people up and just see them as a bank account it's hurtful exactly yeah at least call me say hi (laughs) well i don't want you to be phony and just say hi i just would prefer that you know like you don't call me because we don't talk like that yeah because i guess because i was raised i need that wasn't me i'm not gonna call ask i'm gonna get out and do it and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I guess people really don't have no shame in it. And it is what it is. But like I said, we like to help people, but we ain't going to be used. You know what I'm saying? No, okay. I don't mind helping people. But I think it's a difference between needing help. Like, if somebody needs help, I don't mind that at all. But I don't like that. What I'm referring to is definitely usury. You know, um, don't if you if you want me to help you, the biggest way I can help you is you can ask me how am I doing it. I exactly. don't have a problem with showing you. You know, I believe in teaching people how to fish. But, you know, people see sometimes as, you know, we've been taking trips, though, for years. That's that's nothing new. Um, and people just think, oh, they take trips, they do this, they do this, they have this, they have that. But at the same time, we're still people. You know, respect us in a way that you would want somebody to respect you. If I just called you and like, hey, can I borrow $500? And I never talked to you in years. The last time I probably seen you was two years ago. If you would think that would be rude for, some, for someone to do it to you, then consider when you're just on the other side and you asking somebody else to do it for you. Yeah, they feel like you're acting bougie now. But let's go back to the trips. Because, yeah, we've been doing trips a while be- way before. But I want to let you know. We didn't even have money like you know, that when we was doing trips. American, American, most of these airlines have, like, um, package deals that you could pay monthly on. Twenty dollars a month, like that. So it's it's all about where you spend your money and how you manage your money. Um, everything you don't got to pay up front. You just make a payment plan, and that's how we start our traveling years ago. Is making the payment plans of twenty to thirty dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? But also, we've always with money. We just didn't waste money. Like we, when we budget. got money, yeah, budget. And on top of budgeting creating experiences with our kids, you know, not just going out splurging money and like, oh, yeah, they taking trips. Yeah, because we taking our kids somewhere because we're trying to create memories and do things for them that we necessarily didn't get to do when we were kids. And so people look at that like, you know, they think they're better than us. They don't want to be around us. And no, it's just like when you reach a certain type of mindset, and you come from a dysfunctional family, you recognize it and you kind of separate yourself. And I think even separating from breaking cycles, period, is a form of success. 
Um, cause I feel like we broke a lot of barriers in, in cycles that, oh yeah, especially the County and them food stamps. Yeah. You know, and I don't knock it. I don't knock it for anyone that's on it because we were on it for years, but that was one of my goals is to never have to be on government assistance again. And for my kids not to have to be on government assistance. And so that's the mindset where I'm at, but I don't knock it because if you use it to your advantage to get off, that's great. It's a great tool, yes. But a lot of people ain't using it as a tool. They're using it as a way of life, and that's a bad mindset. But that may be their level of success is their own measuring stick. That may be their success. What, successful to have Section 8 for your whole life? Hey. You pass it on to your kids? Hey, that may be their form of success. Might, it might be, shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't knock nobody. It ain't knocking, but you know what I'm saying? The mindset got to change. You got to shift. Because at the end of the day, that program could get shut off tomorrow. And this is what I've at? learned in life. This is what I've learned in life. Those are there. There's those that are going to listen and get the information and do nothing with it. And the, there's those that are going to get information and thrive and take it and build upon it. And so for me, I don't knock anybody because what you do in your household don't affect me. My thing is, if you don't want to use the information, just don't come asking me for anything. OK, so let's give some information. So if you're out there, you're struggling, you feel lost, and, and you're trying to find yourself, find what you like to do. Once you find what you like to do, find a way to make money from it. And That's you know a different saying? podcast. But, it, I mean, we were still saying, I'm just throwing a little gem out there, little little coins but out there. But it's not, though. Know but it, it's really not. It still relevates. Relevant, and it's relevant not. Relevant to success. I'm trying to help their ass get successful. No, but you no, no, yes. no, because success is basically s- success is based on an outcome and everybody has okay, their true, own outcome. True. OK, so we go. That could be on an entrepreneur class. Or something. Yeah, because success is whatever you whatever you feel your success uh, is. I'm going to have to hold them gems for the later podcast. Y'all y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, th- that's our definition of success. You know, our kids may have their own definition of success. My thing is if you happy and you really walking in a place of peace, you are the most successful person in the world. Money has nothing to do with success. It's a mindset. Oh, there goes a, a coin right there. It's a mindset hey. for you. Yeah, she's dropping coins on y'all, man. Look at that. Ooh, wee. You crazy. So go ahead. Um, Cause I, I, I'm kind of, I'm lost now. So, um, <laughs> This was you your took, topic. You took my um, sidetrack because you didn't want me to share them gems. So, because uh, it was going on a whole different topic. Okay, now let's talk about how people feel like you changed and you seem better. When you get successful. They feel like you're successful. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had that experience. You know, um, let me share my story that was crazy to me because I was mind blown myself. You know what I'm saying? So um, me and my wife been together I'm going to say at least 25 plus years. It's been longer than that, but okay. And the funny thing, my mother-in-law finally asked me to take a picture with Grindface. I was like, damn, Don't you knew me my for mom. 25 years and now you asking me for a picture. Man, and this was probably the only picture we ever took. And this is it's crazy because people want to say. 29 years. 29 years. People want to say we change, but the way you Everybody else is moving. They change because they look at you in a different way. You know what I'm saying? So they want to make it seem like the people that's successful, that they feel like they're successful is the one acting Hollywood and shit. What do you think about that? You ever had any incidents on some shit like that? Actually, it's 28 years. Um, yeah. Come on. You know I, I have. Yeah, I know you <laughs> have. But the point, the people out here listening don't know you have. Uh, it used to bother me in the beginning. It used to make me self-reflect a lot and question, like, you know, how... Because my biggest thing is self-reflection, right? So I'm like, well, how, you know, am I moving? Why are they thinking this? And then I came to terms with, like, I'm the same person. It's not me, it's you. Like, I'm still connected with the same people. I'm still dealing with the same people. I'm still moving the same way I'm moving. I'm still talking the same way I'm talking. But it's you that's changing because now you want to link up. Now you want to call. Let's now you, yeah. So I'm still doing the same things I've been doing. I haven't changed. And so what I've learned is it's not that you change it's people change around you. And so they feel uncomfortable about their situation. So because you're doing what you've always done, 
And so you think you're better. No, I'm still being me just with a little bit more money, but I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still Samia. True. True. I, lo- I lost a couple of people that, um, that don't want to hang out with me, uh, I guess, cause they don't feel like they up to my caliber in life, which is so hurtful because you know what? This is the I thing. I never act though. bougie. No, you, 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 you definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> you is yeah. The opposite. You definitely don't. Um, but it's, it's, but I think that's a, uh, inner issue that you feel inadequate or you feel beneath. See, I'm, I don't, well, I ain't gonna say never because I was at a place where I used to feel inadequate. I was broken. Um, but I don't think I'm better or beneath anyone. And I think it's a self, um, inner issue when you don't think you could be around somebody, you know, because you think they're successful because the reality of the situation, we don't look down on anybody. You know, we have people from all walks of life that we rock with, but they bring something to the table and it's not always money. In most cases, it's not money. It could just be intellect. Mindset. Yeah. yeah. It's the mindset. Cause you know, to me, it's the mindset. Um, I want to be around people that's is trying to do something in life. Um, if you're sitting around smoking and drinking, all well, that's day, the I thing. Bored, but but that saying? that's the thing though, because that used to be you, which was my frustration. But I'm gonna say that was you. you used to get high and you used to drink, but at the same time, I you still was a go getter. Yeah, so I can't yeah. even say that. But I think now that you don't drink, because he's a. a you're but like I a could, social. Uh, yeah, I'm a social drinker and smoker. But, not, but the, the 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 conversation is about the bag, about better yourself in the life. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't see back then. I think you used to just yeah back then it was joke just bullshit. a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was just bullshit. And so now I think it, the sense of when you in those settings and they keep can't keep up with the conversation, the conversation has changed. And so I think people don't because they don't live that. Which I don't feel like you have to live something to discuss something, especially if that's something you want. You know, I was discussing things that I didn't have long before it was even in reach. But it was because I understood it because I wanted it. And so I think that's a sense of people separating, too, because it's like the conversations have changed. Yes. You know, I'm not still talking how I was talking at 22. True, true. And I guess they feel like they can't keep up with the conversation. But it's even in my group of circle, I mean, smoking and drinking and we But talking. everybody in your circle don't smoke and drink. But I'm just saying, when we hanging out or whatever, if I hear them say something, I'm going to pour into it. You know what I'm saying? Into the positivity of, oh, you could do that. You want to do this? But I think that's the you know conversation what I'm saying? But now. this is, a lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't, you know what I'm saying? Because you give them the way out. They don't want the way out. They oh, wanna they want to complain. They want to stay and complain and, oh, man, I ain't got this, this, and that. But, see, I'm trying to give you solutions. They don't want to hear the solutions. And that, those are the type of people I don't want to be around because they're draining. They're they going to suck the energy out of you. You know what I'm saying? They want to constantly and bitch and complain, so bad. and complain and complain and complain and complain. Like, Nigga, get up and go do it. Y'all want to see him get bored like, man. and disinterested in the conversation? He going to get real quiet and stop talking. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do unnecessary talking. Oh, but he going to get super quiet. I'll be like feeling so bad because you know your mate. You just looking like, I wonder if they catching on. Um, <laughs> now they do if they listen to the podcast. <laughs> I really be feeling bad because I be looking like, oh, my goodness, he's so rude. And then that's just me. Sometimes I'll just take one for the team. You know what I'm saying? You never take one for the team. Yeah, for the places I go to, I, you I take one for the team. Take half with places w- w- like, where? Half of the places you go to, I just brought, I go along because I take different. one for the team. You that's, know what I'm saying? that's different and because that's you're a- going with me. Um, no, because even when you go with me, you don't really talk to people. So I don't even know what you're talking about. See, this is the thing, too, that people, most people won't know about his personality. Y'all see this person on social media, but in real life, like, he's, him and my son will pretty much, like I say, except for me. They're not going to do unnecessary talk. I don't like to do unnecessary talking either, but I won't be rude. But they'll just straight out stop talking to you. Like if the conversation, if the conversation, I'm gonna walk away. Yeah, they, him and my son for certain. If, my oldest if they, daughter, I feel trapped at sure. my house. Or she be, at, I'm going upstairs going to bed. Like, shit. when do I ever have people? Oh shit! You, now you just you know can't completely. I, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave my remove myself from the environment. 
you have most more company over than I do. I'm, I don't really have well, we, we, anybody we look, over. We sidetracking from the success story. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go back to the, um, cause she just went all left field. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep her on the range. Okay. So, um, dang. What what other area you want to get to go on, on success, May? May. We live. <laughs> we can't leave them long pauses. Oh, um, I'm just like, why are you calling me May? Like, we you don't talk to me like that. Don't. Yeah, no. Um, babe. So, um, success in terms of um, I think success. I mean, it's just. It's your by your definition. I mean, th- there's no long way to put that. It's just success is your definition of success, however you view that, what that is to you. And that could mean something different for many people. Oh, uh, let me tell y'all, since we um brought it up, this is this was one of my moments of success. Um Are we I talking seen, about moments now? I, I seen the BMW seven um seven series. <laughs> Man, it was um, white with the peanut butter guts. So I was like, man, I want that car. So I finally was in a position to get that car. So I bought the car. She was she didn't agree with the car. She said it wasn't the right move. But the point was, it was a goal on my list to accomplish that was something. Even though it was a bad decision, that it wasn't very worth, bad, it wasn't worth it. But it was still like a, a checklist on my my um, list to get, and it was. It felt good. I felt successful at that moment until I started having car issues. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Demetrius. I always have to talk him out of stuff because, yeah, if he's, he's always had this mentality, I only live once. If I want something, I'm going to get it. And I'm like the analytical, logical one. Like, mm, that really don't make sense. But I understand. And typically, I just let him. I don't even put up a fight. He it's, could it, cuz it wasn't an unnecessary purchase. It was something on my to go list. It was a goal for me. He does you know unnecessary saying? purchases. No, but it's my personal goal list. You don't know my personal goal list. Uh, necessary you know purchases. And the funny thing is, I just got to throw this in real quick. When he do unnecessary purchases, I'm like, "Hey, look, he 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 make his money. I leave him alone. But let me make a, what he think is an unnecessary purchase. Oh, I'm not going to hear the end of it." I'm not going to hear the end of it. What unnecessary purchase you made? Oh, it don't matter. Yeah, I, I, but I the, don't say nothing. He spent $10,000 on a bed. I was annoyed. <laughs> Hold on. Your ass is vibrating every <laughs> night. <laughs> I was annoyed. Shut up. You was vibrating I was every annoyed. Night. What was it that I got? And you was complaining. You got that? Uh, like, are you serious? Yeah, them salesmen be getting me and shit. <laughs> a he bed. Actually, I mean, it was the whole set. It was a whole bedroom set. Uh, yeah, a bed. I just, I, yeah, no. Um, now, to tell me this. You don't use that vibrator every night? I do, but at okay the end then. of the day, yeah, but I okay, then. I would be it's, just it's fine without like, one, too. I, but would you, hold on, because you said you would not go back. <laughs> Earlier, you say you will not she introduce people to something new. Trust me, she liked that bed. It was I do, it. but yeah. I wouldn't spend that much money on it. Exactly, you had that because see, she always had that that cheap mindset. No, it's like she no, 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 I ain't looking at the price. I'm getting it. Bottom line. The difference with him and I is that he has money and he's going to spend it. I can have money and forget I have money because I won't spend it because I've always thought like this. Look, yeah, we in the moment, but at the same time, I'm going to take that money and I'm going to double it. I'm going to put that money into something. So for me, yeah, for years, I wasn't worried about clothes. I didn't care because I was I was building something. And so where he would be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy this. I'm like, nah, let's save it for that. So that's the difference between him and I. Am I cheap? No, I like nice things. I buy nice things. See, the difference is a young black male, tomorrow is not promised. I'm going to live my life. A black female, she got her whole life to live. She can save that money. You know no, we both have a life to live. Like, we growing old together, so you can get be, that concept well, being, right out your being head. Being a black male, your, your risk is much higher. 
But do you still you feel that way? Because I seen, hope you don't. You seen the process that they try to the process for me to get life insurance? All the loops I had to jump through. Yeah, but life I, and death is in the power of tongue, and we definitely not speaking that because we're living long together. Okay, I'm not gonna be no widow, but I think we can wrap this up because bottom line, success is what you make it. Period. I don't, you know, think we stop can letting keep. the internet determine your success. Bottom line, be happy on your own decisions and be happy in life and stop trying to compare it to the Jones or the miles. We're going to wrap that up, man. Y'all tap in, subscribe. This is something new, new venture. We trying the little podcast game, giving you our experience. We've been together for, she said 28 years. That's she did okay. The, she did the math on the calculator <laughs> and shit. Like that's when you know you've been together for a long <laughs> ass time. They whip out the calculators, breaking down numbers and shit. Like, but y'all tap in. Subscribe. How long have we been married? Um, twenty two years. Twenty two. That's how old Papa is. No, he's not. You don't know how old your son is. Forget the twenty three. Twenty three years. Shit, it's uh, who cares? <laughs> but um, y'all tap in. Y'all can find us on um Instagram. I am Grindface. You can find her at. Well, speak up. I ain't gonna say. Oh, what 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 handle? Sania Mayo, everything. Okay, Sania Mayo, everything. So um, this is Grindface and the Therapist, man. Tune in next week. We out. Bye.